Hey, my name's Savannah and welcome to Crazy Abundance, where God is crazily abundant. Join me on this journey where we grow food every day for a hundred days and maybe you'll learn something, but my biggest hope is that you just learn to try new things. Me and my family just moved to a property of 15 acres from the city and we're just growing on it. Physically, mentally, spiritually, all of it. So come along for a hundred days of growing food. I'm not even done yet, but my girls just came home and we're gonna go check on the chicks. I think they're doing a lot better now. Only one died so far. <laughs> Future plan is to get this dog run, cut it out, and then smush it on the shed. And so that we can open and close those doors, but also get in through this door. So I can close them up at night and also they can have a little run of their own during the daytime. So we'll see how that works. So much of it is like, we'll see. <laughs> I mean, what else can you do? <laughs> There's first time for everything and you have to take that first try anyways, regardless what anyone says, because that's how you learn. You kind of figure it out what you want to do first and foremost, and then you go and do it and then figure out how to do it better or if that just sh shouldn't have been done in the first place. <laughs> Okay, well I've watered everything in my garden, but there's still a few things that I need to water. It takes a long time. I didn't, I haven't timed myself yet and I still like, I don't even have that planted yet. So in the future, I feel like it'll take a lot longer. But once everything grows, then um, I won't have to water it as much. So that's nice. It's just while everything's germinating, it's taken a long time. Oh, I gotta drag this hose. Ugh. So I got two sea buckthorns and two honeyberries. And the cool thing with these is that they need specifically a male and female plant to get berries. And so this is the male, this is the female. I don't know which is which. Oh, this is Mr. Honeyberry. <laughs> And so I guess this is Mrs. So the Mrs. will produce the berry. I don't know. Maybe this produces berries too. I guess we'll just have to see. And then I got a dying artichoke and then some asparagus back here. That really should have been in the ground forever ago, but you know, it is what it is. It's all watered. Obviously not the parts that I have still yet to plant which is kind of a big part. And I really wanted to have my garden done by June 1st, but between being a mom, running a business, and trying to get this whole property fixed up, like 
We got half jobs everywhere. <laughs> it's taking a little bit more time and that's okay. So after all that, now that everything is watered, I think it's time for my very first garden tour. I'm really excited about these because three years ago I came across a channel on YouTube called Roots and Refuge Farm and I was just so inspired by her that I like it was 2019 and I literally sat and prayed and I was like God one day can I have a garden like hers? <laughs> I'm already like gonna cry because this is just so beautiful because in her garden she has these cattle panel trellises and I wanted to do that in my last garden. However, they're kind of expensive. I was like, well, okay, I guess we won't do it. And and I was really disappointed because she has beautiful trellises all throughout her garden and they were just stunning and full of like climbing roses and noodle beans. And I was just in awe of her and, and her skills and the way her garden was laid out. And I was just like, God, like, can I have that? <laughs> well. I have my beautiful, not a, just one, <laughs> but I got two. And then I have a few more little arch trellis, but that's with page wire. Um, and then those are my pea trellises. So it's kind of cool. And in that trellis, I planted noodle beans, um, which is what she has hanging from hers. But, and also in that trellis, I planted cucumelons, which also she has <laughs> not like I want to be her but like it's just kind of a sweet moment that three years ago I, I prayed for this and here I am <laughs> so it's not like cleaned up or anything but here we go over here I have potatoes that we planted in video one and then I have lavatera which is one of my favorite flowers at the entrance it's one of my favorites because it was the very first flower that I ever grew. Um, I tried putting seeds in the ground of a bunch of different flowers and the only ones that came up in my garden last year, so it's the first time growing flowers, was these lavateras and I was just shocked at how beautiful they were. And before then I was like, if you can't eat it, you don't need it. Like you don't need to grow these things, right? Flowers are pointless and they take up space, <laughs> but now I have the space and I get to enjoy the beauty of such a, oh my goodness, look at this, look at this. It's budding already. Isn't that, it's just stunning to me. It needs to be watered. Crap, I forgot to water these ones. <laughs> I just remember the joy of coming out and seeing every little blossom open up every single day and it was just the highlight of my gardening season last year. So. Here, we'll, we'll turn around this way. So you come in, you have your lavatera at the entrance. And then on this trellis is grapes. We Like I was talking about, I said, one of the grapes that were coming, they came, I put them in. Um, grapes, and I think it's a zinnia right there. I think these are zinnias because I didn't mark what I planted. It's either calendula or zinnia. Unless one's calendula and one's zinnias. They kind of look pretty similar. And I have some more right here and I'm not sure. That's a Cosmo, I'm pretty sure. But yeah, these are my grapes. They look a little bit dead. <laughs> That's okay. Um, I can't remember what I planted here. I think I planted some more cucumelons actually. And then on this side, I planted some white beans. Be thinking to yourself, a lot to put on a trellis. Yes, it is. I can't even explain myself. I went a little overboard. So, grapes, grapes, flowers, flowers, potatoes, and then these trellises, I have peas, and they're coming up. Oh, and right here, I have um, what it looks like it's dying. I'm not really sure. <laughs> it's uh, chamomile. <laughs> Come in from the trellis, and here's what you're going to be looking at. My two rows of peas, they have come up. Aren't they beautiful? Just little babies. You steward what you have well when it's small and it'll grow anything you want. So it's not beautiful. Um, this, these have not come up yet. <laughs> I planted them like two days after I did these, so I don't know. I don't know. 
I got all of my celery in, and yes, some are dying, and that's okay, remember? The key to growing food is to just put so much in the ground that at least something makes it, and you don't notice the things that die. And then you come up the little walkway. Yeah, my walkways are tiny. I think next year I'm definitely going to make them bigger. Um, I have mashed potato squash, which is my favorite squash ever. It is the best. Go get mashed potato squash. And then I got some crookneck squash. And my zucchini is coming up. I was just looking at these while I was watering. And then I think there's a few more coming up too. Yes, there is. And there was another one, but a lot of grass coming up too, but what can you do? Then in front of the of the peas, I have some like teddy bear sunflowers planted that have come up and some iceberg lettuce on each side as well. Then I have some pink corn. It's going to be popping corn and the kernels are pink. I'm so excited. So there's at least like 210 or something like that. And then in this little patch, I have some spinach. I don't have anything here. Maybe I should put something there. I don't know. Um, and then the grass rows are all black beans. So they'll be drying beans. Basically, you just let the plant die and nothing is up yet. So well, there's that. Oh, what I'm really excited about, the new life of the garden. It just, it's so gorgeous to me. These are my favorite beans ever. They are called dragon tongue beans, and they are so delicious. Fry them up in some butter. So good. Um, so I planted two rows. One, two. So there's a lot of those, but picking them is just so fun. So I'm cool. Then on this mulched area, I really need to mulch the rest of my garden, but it's it's a lot. Um, the what are they called? Leaf beetles? Do you see them there? They're kind of eating them. So I should have, and I knew that this was obviously a possibility. They're everywhere up here. Um, that I should have put some cloth over them, but I didn't, and I'm paying the price. And I'm okay with it. <laughs> you know, I was like, well, maybe, maybe I'll set up a trap crop. Maybe I'll put some like onions beside it, which I did. And maybe, maybe they'll be okay. No, they're not okay. <laughs> it's not okay. So I'm going to replant, start from seed. I got plenty of time to grow cabbage here. Um, even though we only have 125 growing day season, but I mean, cabbage takes 60 days. So I got lots of time. I'm going to just do another bed full of cabbage and I'm going to buy the row cover and be responsible, <laughs> but it, it's okay. Some are doing all right. So yeah, these are purple cauliflowers. Just little babies. That one's not looking too hot, <laughs> but this one's looking great. These were Chinese cabbage. Were. The leaf beetles really liked those ones. Um, and then I just have some white cauliflower all up this row. I don't think I did cabbage in this row. No, I didn't. I have another row of cabbage. Um, and then I did some tatsoi that's coming up here. But flea beetles are also eating it. Yeah, I think they eat it all. Yeah, flea beetles are pretty like ruthless. And then that's what you need to worry about in the beginning of the season, depending on where you live, if you have them in your area, is flea beetles. Flea beetles? No. Leaf beetles. I was like, oh, I know. Um, and then later on in the season, it's the white cabbage moth that lays eggs and then the little wormies, those little green worms. Yeah. So we will grow those undercover and I'll do it the right way the first time. So dragon tongue beans cauliflower and used to be Chinese cabbage. Who knows what I'll get from that. It'll probably all be decimated. This empty bed is planted. It's seeded with carrots. Um, and then obviously tomatoes. Some aren't looking too hot and that's okay. <laughs> that's why you plant so many. And then over here I have 
some broccoli and some cabbage all the way down is lots of cabbage two different varieties i got early jersey and a purple kind and then i also have onions here up until the trellis where i planted noodle beans and they are coming up i planted a lot actually and then on that side i have more white beans i can't remember what they're called like haricotta or haircut something like that i don't know more onions and I still have way more to plant. And then I think I have labels up here. I can't remember what I planted here. I did kohlrabi all the way down. And then here I have two rows of kohlrabi. And then I did fennel. Now what is this middle? Let's find out. Maybe it's like spinach or something. Oh, it's, it's dino kale. And that's my favorite kind of kale. And I have more carrots here. And that is as far as I've planted here. But this will be the girl's garden. So this is Callie's teepee, Peyton's teepee, and Taya's. And then they'll have little walkways that come to a circle here. And then they can plant in the circle and obviously around all the walkways. And then I have seven more beds to plant here. And my beautiful trellis that has a lot of different types of cucumbers. And again, I planted both front and back. Yes, it's a lot. You know, whatever. <laughs> we'll see how it goes. And then over here is my watermelon patch. Now, these are all short day variety watermelons. And they're all like small ones. Because again, we only have 125 day growing season. And so they're all like 70 day varieties. And that's 70 days to maturity, not 70 days to fruit. So I'm still cutting it pretty close. But I guess, again, we will see. In the middle, I planted corn. And then those are my tomatoes. And I haven't finished the trellis yet. Lots and lots of tomatoes. And then my potatoes is that hill. And so it goes all the way around to there. So that's what I have so far <laughs> is that. This is going to be my winter squash bed that needs to be planted right now. Winter squash and summer squash grow at the same time and at the same rate. Winter squash is just a thicker skin, so it stores over winter. Once you've picked it, you bring it inside and it'll store for... Some is like three months, but my butternut squash is a real kick. Like, it's kicking. It's still going. I have one left from last year when I picked it in September. August-ish. End of August, beginning of September, because that's when our frosts usually start. It's still good. So, <laughs> it, I'm, I'm pretty impressed. And I love butternut squash. So, I'm going to be planting a lot of those this year. And I'm not totally... 100% sold on what I'm putting here but I need to figure out but I need to figure it out right now because I need these planted as soon as possible like right now like yesterday and that is a full day of growing food I hope you try something new today